Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our physiology playlist. We started talking about the autonomic nervous system. Today, we'll compare between somatic and autonomic. With that said, now let's get started. This is part of a series, so go to my channel, Metacosis, and then go to playlist, click on physiology, and you'll find the autonomic nervous system starting at video number 26. Today is video number 28. After we're done with the system, you can go to my website medicosisperfectionaries.com for some autonomic pharmacology coming soon. Here is your brain. Draw a line in the sand. Anything in front of it? Motor. Anything behind it? Sensory. So let's say you're running from a tiger. Oh, you want to run. We will start here in the primary motor cortex. Motor because it's front, in front of the line. After this, we go down in the beautiful internal capsule. Go down, down, down until you reach the brainstem in the medulla. And then you will cross to the opposite side of the body. So, if this was left, now we will cross to the right side. And then you descend in the spinal cord until you reach the anterior horn cell in the gray matter of the spinal cord in the lumbosacral area, lumbosacral plexus, because we want to tell your legs to run fast. All of this was the upper motor neuron. At the anterior horn cell, another neuron will start. We call this the lower motor neuron. And it will end in your quadriceps and other muscles of your legs, telling you to run for your life. Now, if you're running for your life, do you want these fibers to be fast or slow? I want them to be as fast as possible. Cool. So, would you like them myelinated or non-myelinated? I want them myelinated because myelin gives me an insulation and makes the nerve impulse transmission faster. So, of course, I want them to be myelinated. Perfect. Do you want them to be thin fibers or thick fibers? The thicker the fiber, the greater the insulation, the faster the neurotransmitter. So, I want them as thick as the brain of a medical student in first year. So your fibers are thick and myelinated. This is the best type of fibers and we call them A, alpha. They are thick, they are myelinated and they are super fast, 100 meters per second. Try to keep in your mind this basic fact. Motor fibers ought to be as fast as possible. Next, let's talk about the spinal cord. Draw the line in the sand. Anything in front is motor, anything behind is sensory, with some few exceptions. So, I'm running from a tiger. I'm running for my life. Oh, running. Is this motor? Oh yeah, it's motor. So, it has to start in front of the line. And it starts here. We call this the anterior horn cell. It's part of the gray matter of the spinal cord. Okay, anterior horn cell, what came before you? Came before me is the upper motor neuron, which started in the brain. Came after me is the lower motor neuron, which starts in the spinal cord and ends on the muscle of your legs. Since you're running from a tiger, what segment is this at? It has to be at the lumbosacral area near the lumbosacral plexus because these are the nerves that supplies your lower extremities. These fibers are thick, they are myelinated. So I get the idea that somatic fibers start at the anterior horn cell, gray matter of the spinal cord. Okay, where do autonomic fibers start? They start here at the lateral horn cell. Okay, cool. Why do they follow the somatic here? Because remember, autonomic is motor. Autonomic is never sensory. Since autonomic is motor, it has to start in front of the line and it has to follow the somatic in front of the line. What do we call this? We call this the anterior horn or the ventral horn. You have horn here called anterior, which is always motor, and a horn here, posterior, which is always sensory. Since autonomic is always motor, it has to follow the ventral horn of the spinal nerve. Here's a question for you. Why did the somatic fibers start at the anterior horn cell, but the autonomic fibers start at the lateral horn cell? Why not the other way around? Try to think about that for a second. In previous videos, we have talked about the nervous system, central and peripheral. What is the central nervous system? Two things, brain and the spinal cord. That's it. Anything coming out of them is by definition peripheral. So all of your cranial nerves are peripheral. And that's a common mistake among students. I'll say, hey, facial nerve is the central peripheral. Oh, since the facial nerve is inside my skull, it's central. Shut up. The skull is not part of the definition. Is it inside the brain or coming outside of the brain? Oh, it's coming outside of the brain. Therefore, it is peripheral by definition. 
and that's why the upper motor neuron is part of the central nervous system. However, the lower motor neuron is part of the peripheral nervous system. Of course, you know the structure of the neuron. Remember that nerve impulses jump like this at the nodes of Ranvier. A collection of somas in the CNS is a nucleus. A collection of somas in the PNS is a ganglion. A collection of axons in the central nervous system is a tract. A collection of axons in the peripheral nervous system is a nerve. That's why a nerve is always in the peripheral nervous system, whether this nerve is cranial or spinal. We've talked about embryology in the previous video. You started as bilaminar embryo. These two layers came from the inner cell mass. The two layers of the inner cell mass are the epiblast and the hypoblast. The epiblast will become the actual embryo. After becoming two layers, you will become three layers. Try laminar embryo. What are these three layers? Ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Which one will give you your skin? Of course, it has to be the ectoderm because this is the one on the outside and will also be the one on the inside. Which one will give you your, your spinal cord? Same ectoderm. Which one will give you your brain? Same ectoderm. Which layer will give you your respiratory tract and GI tract? It has to be the endoderm. How about the mesoderm? These are muscles, bones, connective tissue, blood, etc. So ectoderm is divided into two subtypes. Surface ectoderm for the epidermis of the skin and neuroectoderm for your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system comes from the neural tube. Peripheral nervous system comes from the neural crest. Here is the ectoderm. Part of it will become the neural plate for the nervous system. The other part will stay as a surface ectoderm for the epidermis of the skin. All of this is ectoderm. This layer has mesoderm. We have those mesoderms will become muscles and bones. And you have the notochord in the middle. Notochord is mesoderm. The notochord will induce the ectoderm to differentiate. The neuroectoderm will differentiate into neural crest and neural plate. How about the rest? The rest is some surface ectoderm for the skin. And now you have the beautiful neural tube for CNS, neural crest for PNS, and surface ectoderm for the epidermis of the skin. Neural tube looks like a tube. It will become brain and spinal cord. What is this cavity inside? Oh, this will contain the CSF later. In the spinal cord, we call it the central canal of the spinal cord, and in the brain, we call it a ventricle. Your heart is not the only organ that has a ventricle. Neural crest will become the peripheral nervous system and the cells that myelinate the peripheral nervous system, namely Schwann cells, and the ganglia. Because what's the definition of a ganglion? A collection of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. That's why it's a neural crest. The adrenal medulla is a modified ganglion. That's why it comes from the neural crest. How about the oligodendrocytes, also known as the cells that myelinate the central nervous system? They will come from neural tube, which gives you the central nervous system. Okay, will the notochord become a nervous tissue? No, 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 it will never become a nervous tissue. And that's a famous mistake among students. They think the notochord will become the spinal cord. Shut up, the spinal cord came from here, from ectoderm, mainly neuroectoderm, namely, from the neural tube. The notochord is part of the mesoderm, you know, muscles, bone, cartilage, etc. Oh, speaking of cartilage, here is your intervertebral disc between your vertebrae. Each intervertebral disc has two layers, an outer layer and an inner layer. The outer layer is known as annulus fibrosus and the inner layer is known as nucleus pulposus. So, if we draw a beautiful intervertebral disc like this, the outer is annulus fibrosus, and the inner is nucleus pulposus. The nucleus pulposus actually came from the notochord. Okay, so these are your vertebrae, and this is your intervertebral disc. Where is the spinal cord? Behind them, behind the vertebral body, behind the disc. This is your beautiful spinal cord. How do I remember that this is behind them and not in front of them? Think of the baby. What was behind? Ectoderm. Oh, ectoderm is the nervous system. It's always behind. What was in the middle? Mesoderm, which has the notochord, bones and cartilage. It has to be in front of the ectoderm. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Remember this nucleus pulposus? Yes, in some patient it will bulge and it will cause a neuropathic pain. Oh, we call this disc herniation, and it causes sciatica. Oh, I'm not an expert, but when I see neuropain, I know that we have touched a nerve. And since you have touched a nerve, 
did that nucleus pulposus bulge anteriorly or posteriorly? It has to bulge posteriorly because the spinal cord is behind the intervertebral disc. How medical students manage to screw this up on the exam is beyond me. This is your beautiful neuron. Some of them are myelinated, some of them are not myelinated, but all of them have this beautiful neurolimal sheath imported in regeneration. Because if I sever your axon like this, it can actually regenerate and heal, and these parts will fuse back together because you have a beautiful neurolimal sheath. So, all of them have this. However, some of them are myelinated, others are non myelinated. Speaking of myelin, who makes myelin in the CNS? Oligodendrocytes. Who makes myelin in the peripheral nervous system? Schwann cells. Myelinated fibers include A fibers and B fibers. The unmyelinated are C fibers. What's the difference between A and B since both are myelinated? A are thick, B fibers are thin. Since these are thick, look at this. Look at the speed, 100 meters per second. B, thin, myelinated, only 10. How about C, the worst? unmyelinated and thin, only 1 meters per second. And that's why when you were running from the tiger, motor fibers, you needed A fibers, the fastest, in order to survive. Let's take a beautiful segment of the spinal cord. It has white matter and gray matter. The gray matter is on the inside and it has this H shape. This is different from the brain because in the brain the gray matter is on the outside, not on the inside. Next, draw the line in the sand. Anything in front, motor. Anything behind, sensory. Let's talk about the motor or the efferent root. We call it efferent, we call it ventral, we call it anterior root or ramus. How about this one? It's dorsal or posterior. It is afferent, it is sensory root or ramus. Okay, this one is sensory, this one is motor. Where the flip is the autonomic? Autonomic is never sensory. Autonomic is always motor, that's why we'll put it here on the efferent. The difference is that the somatic motor fibers came from the anterior horn cells, while the autonomic fibers came from the lateral horn cells. Next, this dorsal ramus and the ventral ramus will fuse together to form one beautiful spinal nerve, and you have 31 pairs of these in your body. How does the reflex arc work? Okay, here is your hand, you touch something hot. Oh. I touch, that's a sensation, it will go inside, go to the sensory or afferent or dorsal ramus, enters into the posterior horn and then goes directly to the anterior horn, there is a relay here, and in the anterior horn, this is somatic motor, it flies through the efferent motor or ventral root to your muscles, telling your hand, get the flip away from the heat. After this, the spinal cord will send some signals to your brain so that you may later learn from your mistakes. But the reflex arc itself happened before your brain realizes what's going on. Now let's answer the question of the century. Why did the somatic fibers start in the anterior horn cells while the autonomic start at the lateral horn cells? Why not the other way around? Why not autonomic from the anterior and somatic from the lateral horn cells? Let me tell you, when you're running from a freaking tiger, you're running for your life. Do you want to be fast or slow? I want to be as fast as possible. That's why I give you the A-alpha fibers. They are thick, they are myelinated, they are the fastest thing ever. Okay. Next, I have to put you here. Why? Because look at this. This was the ventral horn. Yeah. The ventral horn has motor fibers, whether they are somatic or autonomic. Since somatic fibers have to be the fastest because you're running from a tiger, let's put it as close as possible to the exit. This is far away, autonomic takes a lot of time until I leave here and I go here and I go here, but look at the somatic, oh, like, two. Because you're running from a tiger, it has to be the fastest, and that's why it's the closest to the exit. Medicine makes so much sense. And this answers question number three. Now let's try to answer the first question. Why do we have more somatic nerves than autonomic ones? Ask Lionel Messi whether or not he likes to have some fine tuning in his feet. Ask a pianist whether he or she would love some fine tunings. Now let's compare between somatic and autonomic. In somatic everything is one, autonomic everything is two. Somatic is just one type, somatic, but autonomic is two, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Somatic has one target, skeletal muscles, and just one type of muscles, skeletal. Autonomic on the other hand has two targets, muscles and glands. Not only this, each one has two subtypes, muscles, cardiac and smooth. 
glands exocrine and endocrine somatic has one function in life to contract these stinking muscles but autonomic two functions i can increase or decrease your heart rate i can decrease or increase your contractility i increase or decrease your gastric motility or secretion somatic fibers are just one type of fibers a specifically a alpha the best the fastest they are myelinated and they are thick autonomic two types of fibers b and c not as good as type a so why not have all of our fibers a alpha because we cannot myelin is expensive in a world of scarce resources which have alternative uses somatic has just one efferent there is no ganglia to relay in because it wastes a lot of time and we're running from a tiger we're running for our lives autonomic yeah we have preganglionic and a ganglia and postganglionic Somatic nervous system has one neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Autonomic, it depends. Sometimes acetylcholine, sometimes it's norepinephrine. I mean, if you're a neurosurgeon in New York and you want to save a kid's life in California, do you want a one-way flight or do you want to relay in freaking Denver? Of course, you want a one-way flight. You don't want to waste time in the freaking ganglia. Even a private jet will be faster than freaking Spirit Airlines. The somatic fibers are the private jets of your nervous system and that's why they do not relay in ganglia because we do not have time because you're running from a tiger you're running for your life somatic is voluntary autonomic is not somatic is an operator autonomic is a coordinator would you like to increase your heart rate decrease your heart rate etc it's a coordinator but somatic operator i want to contract that's it since somatic is faster it has to start at the anterior horn cell closer to the exit but autonomic starts at the lateral horn cell somatic is faster therefore give it the best fibers a alpha but autonomic give it b and c if you want some beautiful colorful antibiotics lectures you can download them today at medicosisperfectionalis.com we will continue because i would like to answer all of these questions for you see you next time thanks for watching please subscribe hit the bell and click on the join button you can support me here or here go to my website to get my antibiotics course and other premium courses